Hi, I'm James Law Jr., host of the podcast Extra Connections, the show where we connect you to the community. I talk to people from all areas of life, arts, health, business, politics, and education. People and places you need to know about, connecting you to the community at large. The show is Extra Connections. It's available on Spreaker.com slash JLJ Media. There's a new episode every week. That's Extra Connections on Spreaker.com slash JLJ Media. We're connecting you to the community. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I never get tired of hearing my opening intro going three years in. I can't believe it. This is a super organizer show with James Law Jr. And I'm James Law Jr., the super organizer. I just love hearing that intro. I guess I'm so thankful to my producers at Adrenaline Radio for finding that for me. Uh, welcome to another edition of Super Organizer Show. It is October 23rd, 2017. That means if you're a Scorpio, it's beginning your sign. And my daughter is a Scorpio. My daughter is a Scorpio. Her birthday's coming up, so... I know who you guys are. I know how you are out there. Yes. Um, now, I, I just want to tell you, I'm here in Los Angeles, and, and it's about to be 10,000 degrees today. And uh, I'm just a little scared, because right now it's nice and cool, and everything's great, and the studio's great, but I don't want to go outside. And, they, and, I, and I woke up this morning to them telling me, if you live near the beach, which I do, it's not going to help you. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, no. So I'm going to try to be careful today. This is crazy. Uh, and luckily, I have no clients today that are outside. Because uh, that is something for folks out there who live in hot weather. You'll be really careful when you're working in garages and sheds and doing and going back and forth when you're in heat. It's something that's totally, you to be really careful with that. Um, and something's got to work really early in the morning. But they're telling us here in L.A., not going to happen. So I have a great guest today, and I'm so excited. I, I, I'm so glad to have this person on my show, and she is from Scotch Plains, New Jersey. I love my I love my East Coast folks. I do, I do, I do. Uh, she's the founder of Organized Transition LLC. She also has an inspiring story to share. We're going to talk about that a little bit too. She has a degree in economics and finance from Columbia University. I'm like you go, girl. And we're going to talk about just we talk about networking and so we're talking about, so about just kind of you know people you have a business then what do you do and we're going to talk about that a little bit and that seems to be one of her one of her specialties ladies and gentlemen east coast west coast midwest north and south elaine fernando hello elaine hey thank you hi how are you did you like that intro did you like it Absolutely. That was wonderful, <laughs> wonderful and perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so folks, as I always do, I want, to, I want to just say we're on iTunes, speaker.com. We are on iHeartRadio, folks. That's right, kids. And we have a Facebook page, um, the SOS Show. We have a Twitter page, the Super O or the SOS underscore show. And then I have the blog, of course, which is the superorganizeruniverse.com. As before we start talking to Elaine, I always do my thanks and gratitude because I believe you should... Always give thanks out loud and live your life in gratitude. And I also want to, I want to just shout out basically two groups that just always show up when I need them. Uh, one of them is NAPO. I want to give a shout out to just the whole organization, all of the little chapters, everything. I want to thank all of them um, because I actually had a scheduled person that had to bow out. And Elaine is here. So I, I, I sent out, I sent out a, a little bat signal and... Everybody showed up. Um, so thank you to Naples for always supporting my show and supporting what I do. Because I love this industry so much. And I'm so glad to be a part of it. And I also want to give a shout out to the Hardys, my Wink Cost a Heart fan family. Uh, once again, I released a book this week, last week, uh, called Becoming a Hardy. It's my eighth book. And it's my fastest selling, most selling book already in just one week. <laughs> I've had eight other, seven other books, and this one has outsold all of them already. So thank you, Hardys, for sharing it and sharing it and sharing it and buying it and letting me know and screenshotting it and sending me pictures. And it's on Amazon, and I'm just like really grateful to them. So, Naples and the Hardys, thanks for the continued support of my career. Because literally, without you guys, it would be very hard for me to do what I do. So, I just wanted to kind of say that. Speaking of speaking of networking, so Ellen, I got to meet you because I put out that so I put out an SOS, but a bunch. 
Um, and, yeah, I'm and, Napo. And, yes, and you and you and you're Napo, and you and you answer. Um, so I, it's, I, it's funny because you sent that out like three thirty in the morning, <laughs> and I just have this habit of waking up at four in the morning, and I was the first one to respond. You were. I know you were. I was like, oh, like great. I mean, and now now for now, now you see now for you. For me, three thirty morning is like way, it's way too late for me to be up in the morning. I'm usually not up that morning, but I got a notification. And I was like, oh, I gotta send this out, and I could have done the show by myself. I've done it before, but I was like, I really like having guests on also to kind of counterbalance um, the shows and talk about their ideas. And I, I love introducing you guys to the general public out there and to other organizers. I think mean, it's just, I love our industry. There's, there's so many great people, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. If, if it wasn't for all those great people out there, I don't think my business would have grown either. Um, so I'm also thankful for everybody that has been a part of my life and this business in the past few years. Because yeah, it's because you know this is this business is fairly young compared to others. I mean, it's like about thirty something years old, but it's very, it's fairly young. And and I've been in business for ten years, almost ten years now. And I and I'm learning as I'm still ten, you know, not eight, nine, ten years in, I'm still learning how much of a community this place, this this, this our industry is, and meeting people. I'm still I'm still net right. It's a great feeling. We have such we have such people who are who love what they do. Absolutely, and you know, for me, this is my. I think I mentioned to you a little bit. This is my uh, second uh, second lease of life, practically. Yes. Yes. And and I. I finally can say that organizing, I found my bliss. Very good. Very good. You found it. I found it, too. I love it. I found it. Um, and you're like me. Some of us who've been around a little longer and have done some other stuff, <laughs> um, to find yeah. it a little later, it's, it's, still, it's just as good. It's maybe even better, I guess, right? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you were on, because you were on, were you on Wall Street? Because I said, again, you were finance and everything. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. I, was, I was an investment banker for 25 wow. years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And in my job, I used to travel a lot to Asia. Um, you know, I had clients everywhere uh, globally. Um, wow. it was It was a very tough and stressful career. I mean, it was lucrative uh, financially, but, you know, in terms of stress. Um, and, you know, just doing the daily grinds, uh, it comes to the point where, you know, it wears out. And, um, you know, I got ill twice, and yeah. then I stayed away from the industry. And then a few years later, a friend of mine convinced me to start my own organizing business. All right, so, so let's stop and, there for so let's stop there for a second, because there are two things I want, I want to ask you, questions I want to ask you about sure. this, this about this section. Okay, one... I know how you feel. I worked at Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter. I, you know, I, I was like, I remember being in these, making this, making money and being in a yeah. field that I was kind of trained for and I did it and blah, blah. And I liked my coworkers, whatever, I was all fine. But you said the stress and the travel. I was traveling every five days. I mean, I was in, and I wasn't happy. And you just said the same thing to yeah. you too. So how did you, have, first of all, so how did you have the courage? Was it because you, you got ill a couple of times, you, that's why you left? Or did you say, I got to go? I mean, how did you get the courage to leave? I didn't have the courage. It was kind of forced on me because I, I had cancer uh, once. That's right. Uh, I still kept on going. And then uh, a few, few years later, I had a brain tumor. And then that was it. It's like, I had to let go of everything. Yes. So I mean, okay. I mean, you just you just dropped you know two big things. I mean, first there's cancer, second brain tumor. Like I mean, I, first of all, congratulations for surviving and thriving after those two things. Um, Absolutely. I mean, but just I mean, like, so it must put things really put things in immediate perspective, right? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, like immediately you think about. Um, you think the value, you think about the value of what you have done in your life so far. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being in the middle age, you kind of think, what have I contributed to my family? Yes. Have I been a good mother? Have I been a good wife? Have mm -hmm. I, you know, so you really re reevaluate everything because 
life is so short. You know, yes. my life was pretty much staring in front of me, and I wasn't quite sure if I was going to make it. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and 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 the thing, you know, and that's and so the immediacy of that, having your life stare right in front of you. It makes you really look and go, wow, I'm not liking what I'm doing or that or I'm done with what I was doing now and not all money is good money and you probably all those probably all those things came up for you, didn't it? Yeah. 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 Everything wow. seemed you know, everything was perfect, uh, until something happened. Yeah. Yeah, God. Do you do you ever do you ever miss it made you think that all that stress is kinda not worth it? Um, you know, because in the end, I'm starting to believe that all that stress and doing something that you don't like to do kind of contributes to a very unhealthy living. I agree. Oh, I agree. It breaks down your insides. I think I think sometimes it can literally make you sick. I had a, I always one of my favorite things. I had a stomach ache for like a year, and when I quit, yeah, it went away. You go into the office, you have that. Yep. Stomach ache. Yep. Because I had, because I had that, I had that done about you. But I had this pile on my desk, my inbox that never went down. It was almost like a comedy show. Like I thought someone was playing a joke on me. Like I stay, I'd be there for ten hours doing work, and somehow I go the next day and the pile is still the same size. I'm like, um, is somebody playing a joke on me? Like, this just are these all real papers? Like it was, it was just like it felt like it never, <laughs> like it never went down. It was like. Yeah, well, that's funny. I think, you know, that's one of the things that um, has helped me kind of go into this business because, for one thing, in the office, I was always organized. Yeah, yeah. And I will discuss later on because, you know, not only residential organizing, but I also do office organizing. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll talk about that a second, yeah. 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 So, okay, so, so so you have, okay, so first of all, how... How are you can today? Are you cancer free? Remission? What's what's going on with that? I'm completely cancer free. Very good. Uh, doing extremely well. Um, yeah, I I wake up thanking God every morning. Oh, I'm sure I'd be me too. I would. And now, okay, so you have cancer, you survive that, but then you get a brain tumor. Like, what were some of your initial thoughts? And you you're like, you're like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, were you just thinking this is this is crazy? I mean. I know. The second time around, I was a little bit angry because I said, again? Yeah, right. Something else? Yeah. You know, like, like I didn't get a, I didn't feel like I got a break in life. And, yeah. um, you know, I, it, it just completely stopped everything. And, um, you know, that's when I had to uh, reassess everything. You know, because the second time around, you have to be a lot serious about your life. Yeah. Uh, first time around, I felt it was a teaser. Mm. Um, second time around, I said, you know, I don't want to go back to having a third one. Uh, I want to kind of delay that as much as possible. Oh, yes. If it was at all possible. Yes. And, um, and live, um, a, a better life. Yeah. Live your best life. Um, which, we all, which we all strive, yeah, we all try to strive to do. Now, but, okay, so, did, okay, for, I want to know, the, the next question I want to ask you is, did you know that organizing was an industry, was a business? I knew nothing about organizing. Yeah, same, yeah, okay. Yeah, I knew nothing. And um, so what happened was one of my uh, girlfriends who's uh, a senior, um, she's at a senior housing, she's the marketing director. And she kind of just mentioned to me, she said, you know, you should really look into this organizing business. And she said, um, you know, we, we see the checks that go out to the organizers when we have an incoming uh, client. So I said, oh, okay. So I, I wasn't really taking it any seriously. And then it was my um, 50th birthday. My husband and I went to Europe uh, for my birthday. And um, I started thinking a lot about it. When I got back, I started researching, and within the week, I, my, my company, and I formed my company, and that was it. Okay. Wow. Because I didn't know anything about the stuff either. I was like, it's a it's like it's a it's a industry. It's a company. I mean, you could do that. I didn't know either. And I did some research, and I was like, oh, there is there is an industry. As I said, it's fairly young, but there's an industry, and 
And uh, it was good to know that that, that, that that was an option for me. Because this is like you, I liked, I liked organizing. I liked helping others, like giving back. So that's it. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting because, I, I, as I mentioned, in business, I was always organized. And, um, and as soon as I discovered the industry, um, I, I, you know, registered with NAPO, I did all the classes, I did everything to get myself up and running, and pretty much, you know, started networking immediately, and, um, you know, I would say three months after, uh, I did extremely well, and it hasn't stopped since then. So, folks, she does home organizing, financial paper organizing, office, photo organizing, downsizing, moving relocation, um, so you're a pretty well-rounded uh, service that you offer. Um, and yeah, uh, you're, I you're, do financial because of my background. Oh, completely. You have degrees. You know, you completely, I'm sure. Um, yeah. And, and you're, in, you're in southern or central New Jersey? I can't remember. I'm in central New Jersey. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, that's what I thought. So, so, where, so are your clients mostly New Jersey? Do you get, do you get any New Yorkers? I mean, you, how's that area for you? What do you get? Because um, I'm uh, going to work on a job um, at the Hamptons downsizing. Oh, wow. So, mm-hmm. so I'm going out for um, five business days. Wow. Um, yeah, so it really depends. Uh, sometimes the financial could be a virtual organizing. Okay. Um, I go to New York, uh, pretty much all of New Jersey from north to south, because most of my clients in the north have summer houses down south. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it really depends. So I just have to, to juggle it with my team in terms of, um, you know, location and, and the job at hand. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, okay, so you've been in business for a couple of years. What is one thing so far that has surprised you happily, in a positive note, since being in business? surprised that I'm doing well already. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, that was the big surprise. Because um, I have to be completely honest, I yeah. thought that this would be a hobby. Okay, okay, that's fine. I, yeah, I just didn't expect it to, um, to do well. Yeah. And, you know, as well as, well as this, you start, you're starting a business, first of all, not easy, folks. You don't just wake up and start a business. I mean, you can wake up and start a business, but it's like it's not... That easy. It's, I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into it, a lot of paperwork and planning, and now you're your own boss, and how you know what hours you want to have. It's a lot that goes on at opening yeah. a business. You know, I know that. So I'm like, so that's so congratulations to you. Like, it's like it's, it's working out. You know. Yeah, I think one of the things, um, even when I advise um, business owners, the one thing is you can't just. You know, let me just do a classic example. You just can't go out there, start your organizing business without having the business foundations in place. Yes. You've got to have your foundation first. So that would mean, you know, whether you're incorporating LLC, your bank accounts, your um, your financial software, mm-hmm. everything, because you do not know if your business is all of a sudden going to pick up and you don't have the foundation in place, you're going to completely get lost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it that's is, how yeah. businesses go under. Yeah, that's right. It's very true. Um, so what is, one th- what, is, what is one thing that's surprised you? Is, is, there, is there anything, is there, is there any negative sides to this that, that surprised you so far that you've had to kind of overcome? The negative side to it is, I didn't, it is, um, is my time management. <laughs> oh, funny. The reason, the reason being is that um, juggling the jobs, juggling, you know, life, yeah. personal, yeah. everything, uh, you have to have your time management down pat. Yeah, I'm sure. And sometimes it's still a challenge for me. Yeah. That makes sense, and as well as which I I always tell people, you'll figure it'll it'll it all come together because that's that's your thing. You want you want it, you want it to come together, um, but it can be. It's it's because see for me in the beginning it was very much well. I'm excited, I love doing this, 
you could, you, could, you could end up, you could always be working on your business. There's always something you'd be working on. Um, and for me, it was turning it off. Because I didn't have an office to go to. You know, I have an office in my house, but it wasn't an office to go to. So it was staring right in front of me. So I had to find ways to kind of extricate myself. And yes, go see your nieces and nephews. Go see your grandchildren. Go do, I mean, like, I had to really pull myself. Because I enjoy it. I love what I did. It was almost like a weird thing. I love what I'm doing. But when you do it too much or you don't do it efficiently, it doesn't work for you, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's where, you know, you've, you've got to master your time management. Yes. Which basically is productivity management, right? It's, it's basically learning how to make the pieces all fit within a certain time period. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that thing. So, okay, so now you, so you start, you start a business. You're moving right along. So you said Napo had a big effect on you, correct? Talk, yes, about, that. Talk about that absolutely. a little bit. Talk about that a little bit. Napo because, um, you know, it, it gives you that kind of accountability because there is a code of ethics. Um, mm. You know, people would, you know, people would look for that, like, you know, are you uh, registered somewhere? Are you certified somewhere? Mm. Um, you know, because if you're just a professional organizer without that kind of accountability from from a group, um, I just, I just feel like. Um, it's, it's not enough. Um, so I, I hold myself accountable with Mabo. I love the networking that I get from there because I meet other organizers. I learn from them. Um, maybe they have something to learn from me. Um, they've got a lot of uh, continuing education, which is quite helpful. Um, one of the classes that I first started was uh, how to start your own professional organizing business. Mm -hmm. um, and that became my religion. You know, like I always go back to that. Mm. Okay. Yeah, very... good notes. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good resource. Uh, I try to go to uh, the conferences every year. I missed this year because I was in Asia for a month. Oh, wow. But I do try to go every year. Uh, I serve on the board of directors of our um, NAPO New Jersey. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's, a, it's a good way to give back. And at the same time, it's a good way to kind of keep on top of the trends of the industry, what's going on out there, uh, how I can be a little bit more proactive with my business as opposed to being reactive. So it's just being on top of everything. So let's so that's a good segue into networking because your business, like you said, you can start a business. You're you're out there. You're trying, but you have to do more than just start a business. You kind of have to network to help your business grow. Correct? Yes, absolutely. I um, I always tell people that when you want to start going out there, you know, the first thing is your logo, your business cards, your business, get your foundation together and start getting your name out there. You've got to network, network, network. And um, when I started, I must have had a dozen networking events or wow. networking groups. Yeah, so, because my rule of thumb was... Um, my action plan every week is you do two networking. It depends on how busy your business is. Okay. If you're not busy, you should be out there networking every day. Oh, right. No, right, right. Okay, right, right. And then on top of that, you really have to network correctly. You can't just go out there and say, I'm going out there because I'm going to try to get business. When you network, you form alliances. I always tell people you're you're networking because you want to uh, try to find people, identify people who would help you with your business. The second thing is you might get your clients, you might not. And the third thing is you might form joint ventures, strategic alliances with people that can help your business. So mm -hmm. it's really just getting your name out there mm -hmm. constantly. And on top of this networking events every week, I do make one-on-one -on -one appointments with strategic alliances. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, everything you're saying I'm liking so far. Okay, so there's several... So basically what you're telling us, us listeners who are out there who are listening, and this could be for any business, 
there are several types of networking um, that are kind of specific for you. And some of that is getting your name out there group wise, some of that is actually one on one, yeah, but, but very much in person, correct? In person. Yeah. Definitely in person. Because that's the, you know, the, the, the thing about networking that we should always remember is that um, you have to be approachable. You're trying to develop a trust. Mm-hmm. You're trying to develop and build a relationship. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how can people see you're genuine or authentic if they, if they don't see you face to face? I agree. I agree. And coaching, we call it high touch communication, where you're just you're in front of them. It could be it could be um, a workshop, it could be a conference, it could be a one on one meeting. But like you're in front of them, they can see your eyes, they can see your body language, they can you can you know sometimes when you hug that tells you I trust you or shake hands or you know it's like being in person because you know with such a social media online thing so much now it's like so impersonal. Absolutely. And emails, completely impersonal. Because um, if I have a, a lead or a, a possible strategic alliance from one of the networking, pick up the phone. I mean, send yeah. an email. I mean, unless that person is receptive to email. Right. Or give, when you meet someone, just ask, what's the best way for me to get in touch with you? Should right. I email you or can I call you? Right. Um, but calling is the best. Yeah, yeah. I, I have I have found I was talking about another another show that I was another day how um, every once every one I think it was every third quarter or so every every three quarters I would actually print out postcards and I would walk the streets you know the areas that I wanted business from I pick an area and I actually walk in and drop my postcards say hi to people and you know what I got Cold business walking. I got I got business. Cold walking. Yep. Yeah. I think it's to yeah. me. People are like that's so old fashioned. I'm like, well, sometimes old fashioned ideas aren't really old fashioned. They're timely. They they they're timeless. I should say they go. Yeah. They there. There's some things that you know. Like I said a handshake still works. I mean, like everybody thinks it's all these other fancy things. I'm like, but I actually printed out postcards. It didn't cost me. I went to Vista Print. Everybody, it didn't cost me that much. I print them out and I literally walked the streets that I wanted to work in. And I, to the businesses, to the residential, just kind of passed them out. Said hi to people, didn't pressure nobody. Just was like, here, I'm so-and-so. People ask me questions. And I got, I got responses. I mean, I really did. And it's funny, it's funny you say that because when you cold walk, the response tends to be a lot higher. Yeah. But if you cold call, the response is almost nil. Exactly. Exactly. I said, I, I see, I, I get it. I know you get it. I get it. I get why. Sometimes if they want to, they respond to you, the per because I had to realize I'm the product. In many ways, I'm the product. They they want to they want to hire me, or it could be, could be my team too. But still, I'm the face. So if they feel like they can trust me or like me, then they'll go forward, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And you can say the same thing about you know uh, networking. It's really you know you're really selling yourself and on top of that like you know one of the things that i always tell people is and i go to these networking events and some people their elevator pitch is not as effective oh you said gotta that. work on a very effective elevator pitch if you have to hire someone like a coach do it mm-hmm. it's well worth the money mm-hmm. so glad you said that if you have like i always say all the time because i work i work in obviously i work in entertainment <laughs> obviously, TV and radio, and I always tell people, you know, if you don't catch somebody in the first 30 seconds, they will turn a channel, or turn off your podcast, or change, you know, on a radio a radio station. You have to get them in the beginning, and your elevator pitch, or your, they call, some people say the hub statement, or whatever whatever it is, and somebody asks you, what do you do? You got to be able to make sure you get as much as you can in there that makes sense, and represents what you do, right? <laughs> You know, this sounds... It's not easy, but it's yeah. like, you got to have a very effective one-minute pitch. Your elevator pitch has to be very effective. And, you know, I always tell people, it, it's you've got to find that connect. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm talking to someone who uh, is a mover, then my pitch to him would have something so that it has something to do with a mover. 
I'll, t- I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what mine was in the very beginning when I first started my business. I go, okay, I go, I am a trustworthy, non judgmental professional organizer that specializes in working with people who are a change of life, who want a, a new path of success for themselves. And so I used to always say when I first started, that was my first, that was my first ever one. And, and people were saying, they liked my said, non-judgmental. They love that word for some reason. And when I said change of life, they got what that meant. Because the next statement, the next question they say is, oh, so is that like widowhood, you know, death? So I think I was like, yeah, those are, I mean, those are retirement. I mean, so it's like I, I've had somebody help me craft, you know, certain words in my statement that people can pick up on. And it, and it seemed to work for me in the beginning. It seemed, it seemed to work. that because on my website um i i did that was one of the good words to put in you know like you're organizing in a very non-judgmental yes. way people love that oh you're i'm looking at your website right now and it says that on several of your pages and when your services page it says see folks i know what's going on and her and i actually put on our on our facebook page links to her stuff um, so you can go on there and look at that. Um, but I just, ha- now of course my system is going slow. Um, oh, here, where you go? Okay. All throughout the project, we are there to support you with no judgments. I love that. Also what you say, yeah. no two projects are alike. And I like that also. Because I, I, I'm tired of just one size fits all organizing. It, uh, everybody's different, you know, and I like everybody's that you say different. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's, it's funny because I feel like, you know, in all the randomness of how a client comes to me and all that stuff, um, you all, there's always something different in each job. And um, and my takeaways is always, because it's always a psychology game when you're dealing with clients and, and they're, you know, and they're valuable stuff. Yes. So, you know, you have to pay, play psychologist. Yes. And... Um, like a therapist almost. Yes. That's why somebody was telling me the funny thing is the uh, the acronym of my business OT Organized Transition. You could you could almost think about me as an occupational therapist. Oh, how funny! Oh, how funny is that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, because that's what we you know that's what we are. Yes. Now I want to ask you, what do you look for? Yourself, and this could be good for anybody. Anybody has their own thing. Think about your own selves at home. In terms of making alliances, what what do, what kind of, what kind of things do you look for in another person or another or another group? Uh, for instance, well, first of all, when I said that I had fifteen groups at one point, now that I'm um, extremely busy, what I did was I looked at you know the return of investment in in terms of each group and which one has been more my match or which one is not a match. Um, but for instance, if, if in this networking group, I had a one-on-one last week with the interior designer. Okay. So I, I found out from her that, um, you know, it's hard for her to do a job if the house is cluttered. So she needs an alliance with me to do the decluttering before she does the interior designing. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, she would say, well, you know, sometimes... You know, what do you do with closets? And and I would mention that, you know, depending on the lifestyle, I would have it, you know, depending on the lifestyle and the budget, I would have the client customize it. And if it's customized, I have a strategic alliance with a closet guy. And now what's going to happen next week is I'm introducing my closet guy to this interior designer. There you go. So you just keep on going, and and it's also another form of um, having another streamline, you know, another stream of income um, because of all these alliances. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's a, it's completely um, one of those things where uh, I always try to figure out, you know, who not only what can I get out of them, but what can I offer them also in return? What what can I do? <clears throat> that would actually affect change for them or add to whatever they're doing. Um, because I'd like to collaborate, but I've had to learn over the years to kind of trim the fat and, and really choose good collaborations. 
Because I've had some bad ones. I've had some that just really didn't... They either didn't go anywhere or didn't work beneficial to either one of us or I couldn't really fully give to them what they needed. So I was like, I had to really kind of look at who I collaborate with. That's why I was asking, like, what do you look for? Because I'm like, it's just kind of very interesting. Yeah, no, I agree with you because there's some collaborations out there that just suck you dry and yeah. you really don't get anything back. Yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> So we gotta, yeah, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful with that. You gotta be careful with that. Just like know that okay, well you know some you meet people and it's sometimes exciting at first, but they may not be the right match for you in terms of because you number one you don't want to bring down your brand at all. Yeah. You, you don't you don't bring down your you don't you don't you don't do anything that's gonna hurt you and what you've built, and also but you want to add on to whatever you know you want to make sure it all it all kind of fits like a glove and. And there's some really, and, it, and when you have a good collaboration, there's nothing better. There is nothing better. It's wonderful. Um, that could yeah. be, that could be sharing, you know, I live in LA, so it's really big. There are a couple of organizers we all kind of, if the job is way over there near them, I may say go to them. Or, and vice versa. James is over here by the beach. It just, you know, so we, we, we share sometimes leads and things because, uh, because LA is just so spread out. We're just so, we're so spread out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Here, it's a little bit, um, I would say, like, I'm a little bit far from a lot of people, but then it's now slowly becoming a little bit clustered, like there's a lot more people now in the business. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, um, it kind of doesn't matter because everybody has their own specialties. Yes. Yes. Um you know, someone, like, like if I met another organizer and they're extremely good with closets, and if I'm doing another job with a client downsizing, I might need someone to go to my client that needs closet. So I, I could use hiring a subcontractor. So it's that kind of alliance that, you know, you should never be close to. Competition is not necessarily competition either. Mm -hmm. I sound I sound blue in competition, so I feel like we're we're a beautiful business with so many. There's the world all needs us, so it's like there's so and we're in America where there's a lot of disorganized, messy folks. <laughs> there's plenty. I mean, there's plenty of work to go around, and if you all do your best, you will find the work will come to you. I feel like it just it will come to you, um, and so yeah. So I don't I don't. So there's no there's no for me no competition nothing at all. So like we're all in it together. That's kind of how I look yeah. at it. I agree. I agree. And that's, it's tough, you know. And, um, you know, the other organizers out there, they're, they've been um, crucial to how I've grown. Uh, I still work and have alliances with them. Uh, I still sometimes take subcontracting agreements with, you know, as I've contractor jobs with other organizers if I have time. Uh, so we help each other out. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like that. I do. I like that a lot. Um, what, what is one, one more thing that, you know, as, as, when you, as that you found as you've been doing your business and taking your old life too, have you been, have you been able to merge something together? Have you been able to use the old life in this? You mean my financial yes, side? Yes, correct. Yeah, actually, the financial organizing um, is also um, uh, a big piece of my business. Uh, so not, you know, with individuals, um, whether they need help, uh, bill paying, budgeting. I mean, it may not be so close to what I used to do, but I'm a numbers person. Mm -hmm. So I can help create, you know, a budget. I can help create, um, you know, uh, well, yeah, I could help uh, create a budget or a bill paying system for someone. Uh, for larger clients like, you know, trustees, um, you know, I could help them with their investment objectives and refer them to an investment advisor, um, you know, look at the efficiency of their monies. With businesses, um, I help businesses, uh, we, we look at their QuickBooks or, you know, their whatever they use accounting-wise, and then we do year-on-year -year reports, quarter-on-quarter -quarter reports. We look at your income, your expenses, where are you bleeding, why aren't you profitable? Um, so it's almost like reading a balance sheet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, so those are the things that I, I 
feel I add a lot of value to um, businesses and individuals when it comes to money. Yeah, if that's that's good. That's good. Wow. So you okay? So if people want to hire you, um, where should they go to find you to hire you? I'm sorry. If people if people want to hire you, where should they go to hire you to find you? Online um, websites. Can you tell them where they can find uh, you? My website is um, www.organizedtransitionsllc.com. You can contact me there, or you can call me at 908-294-0757, and just hire me. I just I do hire her. You're in New Jersey. Get her. You're near. You're around. You're down there somewhere. Go to her. I tell them James sent you. Yes, that's right. We have we have pretty much anything and everything that um, you know. I feel like there's nothing out there that couldn't be too much of a challenge. Yeah. And uh, you know, with Napo's support, if there's a little bit of a challenge, there are always people to call and ask opinions and advise. So. You know, so having that good support, you know, in case I come up with a challenge. Yeah. But wow. nothing is challenging. Just come to me. Yeah. Just come to her. She'll help, she'll help you out. And it's super nice. I'm so glad you're on the show. You're now part of the, the SOS show family. We are all, we are now, we are now connected. Um, you'll have to come yeah. back, you have to come back on another time and, and talk, we'll, we'll pick a subject and talk about it um, with the organizing Absolutely. world. It's been great. Um, and I'm glad we were able to make this happen. Uh, folks, so most of her stuff is on, on our page, the SOS show. You can go there, and I, I sent links to her Facebook page and also to her um, website. So it's easy. Just one click. One click. You'll be there. Just one click. And she, she has a nice website. It's very clean and explains what she does. And that's on, I, I, I like your website. It's really good. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm actually changing it again. Hey, okay. Well, there you go. It'll be even, it'll be even yeah. better then. It'll be even better. Even better because I'm going to have both the businesses and the residential yes. uh, in, in one website. Perfect. Um, and uh, so, again, so you can find this this episode will be with all the others on iHeartRadio, uh, iTunes, and Speaker.com. You can go there. And if, you, and if you find it, share it with others. Share it with people you think you need to hear this. Um, tell people about it. Rate, comment, subscribe, like. Um, get the word out there. I've been doing this for three years. I can't believe it. It's, I just, I really enjoy. I love doing this show, and I want to continue. So I have great guests like Elaine. Just I want to keep. I want to continue and keep it and keep it and keep it going. And of course, you can follow me, James. And thank you so much for um, having me. I had so much fun. Yay! And congratulations on your run for your show. Thank you. Many more years to come. Yes, that's, that's, see, from your lips to God's ears, yes, I, I, ho I hope it goes on for a long time. As long as like, they can wheel me into a studio and I have a voice, I'm going to keep talking about this wonderful industry that, we, that you and I both are a part of. I, just, I, I love it. I, just lo I love being an organizer. And I love I, it, too. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah. just it's, we, found, we found our calling. That's what I like about it. Absolutely. It's our bliss. It is our bliss. That's right. We found our bliss. We found our bliss. She's absolutely correct. Yes. Yeah. You guys, I'm James Lott Jr. You can follow me. We're all James Lott Jr. are sold at James Lott Jr. And just everywhere. Just type my name and Google me, and I will pop up everywhere under James Lott Jr. And everyone have a great week, and stay organized. <laughs>